Hello and welcome to yet another installment of Arch is always right, as Steam is now banned in China, apparently. I will add on that slight qualifier because there is still the ever so tiny possibility that the downtime could be due to some manner of failure or attack or internet outage, circumstances other than the Chinese government flipping the switch and finally enforcing the same level of censorship on Steam as they're doing on basically every other platform. And somehow, despite this being a literal inevitability, you should never underestimate the sheer strident stupidity of the mainstream gaming media, as the laughably named The Gamer here exclaims that this move comes as a surprise. Now, we've read an article or two from Stacey Henley here before and, well, they know nothing about video games and they know nothing about China. Because again, this was going to happen the moment that Steam bent the knee and offered the sucky sucky of the Xi Jinping cocky by creating Steam China. The China exclusive Steam quali client client that only platforms the games that have managed to squeak their way through the tiny, tiny, tiny tiny little gap that still remains in Chinese censorship. They, uh, they've they got more games now than they used to when it was first launched some, what, four or five months ago or something like that? They had, what, 40 titles, I believe? Now, uh, judging by the, uh, I believe this is the new and trending tab, they've got about um, a page, round of 88 entries, compared to 1,403 last time I checked on Steam, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something, but it sure as hell ain't a lot by any stretch of the imagination. And a lot of the games, too, you probably haven't seen. Uh, there are the some exceptions. Subnautica, of course, CSGO, obviously. But there are a lot of Chinese titles as well, made specifically for the Chinese market, which are what able to um, comply with the various rules and regulations of China. I'll also point out that uh, this occurred some 14 hours ago. I figured I'd wait for a while to, you know, see if it worked itself out, but I'm feeling pretty confident reporting on it now. And specifically as well, credit where credit is due, the Chinese are getting pretty damn good at this whole tyranny thing, as only access to the storefront appears to have been limited. People are still able to connect to the actual Steam client and are still able to play the video games that they already own, which Again, brilliant maneuver. If the government had simply just wiped Steam off the face of the earth, including access to everyone's video games, there would have been a lot of really, really angry people. But if you only take away access to the storefront, well, I'm sure there's still a sizable quantity of butthurt passing around the Chinese market right now, but... <laughs> Seeing as they don't have any access to, you know, forums or community platforms or anything like that, I think the outcry is going to be rather limited and thoroughly contained by the Chinese government. Again, they're getting pretty gosh darn good at this. Still, there is a possibility that this isn't actually the block, but it's vanishingly small, really. Now, what does this actually mean for, uh, you know, any other boneheaded morons who think this is a complete surprise and shock? Well, a couple of things. First and foremost, the primary casualties of this uh, restriction will be those companies that had made several bets on the Chinese market and hoping to expand into it, particularly in the case of, of course, gaming companies. Uh, Creative Assembly being one of these, who bent over backwards, trying desperately to please the Chinese market, making, for example, Three Kingdoms, which is glorified propaganda game in many ways, and even releasing their patch notes in, in uh, Chinese first and foremost. Now, I called it even back then that their game would never make it through the Chinese censorship need lie, and uh, it, no, it, it hasn't. I checked. Total War Three Kingdoms, or any Total War, is still not on the Chinese platform at all. 
You've got uh, this thing, whatever the hell this is, but uh, there is no Total War here. Because, well, games like that, they're not, uh, they fail to properly uphold the spirit of China, you see. And it shows China as many separate nations. Whoopsie. That's, that's a big no-no for the Chinese censors, you see, who maintain that China has always been one unified nation. Under got, I suppose. The second thing that's going to happen, too, is that Steam... Well, well, what should happen now is that Steam should be receiving severe critique from governments and human rights organizations all across the world for kowtowing to a communist regime that does some pretty darn unspeakable things to their own people and allowing them to tighten their grip yet further on the internet happen, because Steam has way too much in the way of good boy points, but it should. As for people actually in China, they are of course now severed from pretty much all outside sources of games. Bearing in mind too, Steam Global was not actually sanctioned in China. They didn't have like a permission or anything to operate within China, there being a whole wide variety of various rules and regulations for companies selling things in China, but they were simply just being ignored. The Chinese government just uh, kind of took a took a little view away, hoping that the problem would solve itself. Though they did get Steam to remove all of the community pages on their Steam client in China. Hmm. Sucky, sucky Chinese cocky once again. Furthermore, this is also going to probably see a. I, I'm hoping at least. Like this might be a little bit of wishful thinking here, but it should see at least a little bit of an exodus from the market. You would think. There's another example quite recently here, where Intel apologizes in China over Xianjing supplier statement. So Xianjing, in case you were unaware on. Xinjiang, or however you pronounce that, is basically one very large slave labor, labor camp. <laughs> okay, slight exaggeration, but not by much. There is a uh, subset of the Chinese populace there, the Uyghurs, who are um, being treated rather roughly by the Chinese state, including, several reports seems to suggest, slave labor. Intel had gone out to suggest that their suppliers should not be working with the province or be sourcing their, uh, their parts or raw materials from the province, implying therefore that there was some kind of truth to these vile and slanderous rumours upon the great and grand glorious honour of China. And uh, once the China the whip, they swiftly back down. Because the thing is, the Chinese market is absolutely enormous. It is huge. It is a gigantic golden goose, which is why so many companies are willing to throw morals and ethics and everything else far, far, far to the side without so much as a question about it. Now, Google was actually one of very, 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 very few companies who took a good and serious stance against China back in the day. It's uh, slowly changing its position now, but what can you expect, I guess? However, with the recent increase in censorship again, and this was this is just the, the last in the long line, uh, Fortnite was shut down in China November 15. Children limited to three hours of gaming a week, children meaning anyone at or below the age of 18, mind you, and the banning of cryptocurrency. To be fair, it's probably going to happen over here too, sooner or later. And it was reported that not a single game had been approved in the two months after those restrictions. And this followed another dry spell of, I think, three or four months before that, and so on and so on, because again, the Chinese censors are getting ever more stringent and strident. Their rules are many, many, many fold. And the Chinese market at this point is as large as it is theoretically, it is a theoretical market first and foremost these days. And the hope is that many, many developers, like perhaps Intel, like hopefully Steam, and many game developers too will realize that the resources required to even have a snowball's chance in hell of passing through the Chinese sensors is simply not worth it. In the case of Creative Assembly, they created an entire game trying to suck China's asshole, and 
they still didn't get cut down anywhere. Bearing in mind too, it's not just that you have to regulate what's in the game, like for example the complete and absolute ban on blood of any kind, no matter the colour. They, they tried to get around this, the developers did, by making green blood for a while. The Chinese censors swiftly cracked down on that. You also need to enforce various security measurements to make sure that the children aren't playing the video games after their bedtime, including, but not limited to, facial recognition software that scans you and goes, right, you are the correct person, I've locked your account to three hours of game time, have fun. One would really genuinely wonder if even a company as scummy in many ways as CA would have admitted, or would have admitted, would have given in to that kind of requirement, because god, god. It's, uh, it's rather authoritarian, shall we say. Uh, who am I kidding? Of course they would have. They're absolute bastards, after all. They don't have any problems with ban lists either, mind you. Another potentially interesting consequence is the yet further isolation of China from the West in general. Now, China has already been a fairly, um self-contained place, shall we say. It has built very tall walls, both in the literal form and the firewall form. The Great Firewall of China is an excellent example of this. Yet, video gaming used to be a bit more of a refuge, where Chinese users could pop on the actual global Chinese... global Chinese... the global Steam platform, and they would either have a, even have access to some of the community features. Not all of them, mind you, but things like reviews, for example, and hey, it was one of the few places they actually could complain about things, and did so vociferously as well. I keep bringing up the Creative Assembly example because Three Kingdoms is the example I am most familiar with, but when Creative Assembly tried to ban sexy waifu mods, it was the Chinese fanbase first and foremost that yelled at them very, very loudly and very, very stridently, and got them to back down, at least in part, on that particular point. Although, what was it, the, um, the grey CA who was, oh no no, sexy men, that's okay, but women wearing bikini armor? Well, we'll have to reconsider our commitment to modding then. <laughs> Like I said, CA are no strangers to ban lists, uh, but this is inevitable. If it hasn't, by some chance, happened now, and honestly, this would be around about the time I'd imagine they'd do it as well. What, it's been about a year or so since the, uh, it's, it's been less, hasn't it? Six months, maybe, a year since the release of Steam China? This would be about the time where they'd make a move, where people would have kind of, um, gotten used to the thought that this was a temporary thing now. They would eventually lose access to global Steam, and by allowing people to keep their Steam games, but just taking away the storefront, the potential backlash is undoubtedly going to be considerably lessened. Mayhaps um, they could even blame somebody else. Maybe uh, Steam, through some vile act of bigotry, decided to close the storefront. Steam might never admit to that, but um, <laughs> alternative history is a frequently practiced habit in China after all. It will be interesting to see how this shakes out. Let me just, uh, just to be certain here, do one last little update for Steam DV. If they have any news, nope. Steam China is still apparently blocked. So, as of right now, the recording of this video, Steam, the storefront, is down and apparently blocked in China. And uh, unlike certain blind idiots, I god damn called it. Till next time, have a good day.